Oh yes, come on. That's gonna be great. Guys, what's cracking today? I'm down at the beach where the surf is pumping. It's crazy. It's about eight foot. The sky is just looking glorious. And I'm shooting everything, everything you see in this video, from the video to the B roll to the images, is shot on my iPhone 12 Pro Max. The idea this morning is to empower you to use your phone to come out and take incredible images just with what's in your pocket. Let me just interject. The other thing I'm gonna do in this video is talk to you about the strengths and weaknesses of the phone to be used for images and videos. So you get that too, but you don't get it just yet. We'll just feed it into the video as we go along. So let's get back to the beach. Uh, this is Burley Heads. These are the volcanic rocks that fall down from right up the top there, which is ultimately Burley Hill. And over the years, the rocks have tumbled down into the sea. And right now, they are all saturated. They're soaked, they're slippy. We've got some frothing happening down here. But they create this beautiful black contrast against the magnificent sky. And when that sky pops, and you can see it pop, and this is, this is high cloud, right? That's why it glows. And this is low cloud, which doesn't glow but it creates a contrast. Now the sun should come up around there soon. And as the sun comes up around there, that low cloud will create a, a diffuser almost, which will shoot rays of sun out behind it. Now the sun's not quite up yet. And here's the fascinating thing. Most of the color has gone. Here's what it looked like beforehand. Here's the color that we had before. And we had that color because about 15 minutes before all the action happens, in what's known as golden hour, because the shots are golden, you get this beautiful colors filling the sky. Wow, look at those waves. Those waves, oh my gosh. Man. These waves are about twice the size of a person. I'm gonna do some surf photography with my phone when the light gets a little bit better. I'm gonna put up the shutter speed. I'm gonna zoom in and see if I can get any quality images of these surfers. But these waves are just pumping. I've waited months for some good conditions to do this kind of video. And then today the sea turns it on. Like, come on, look at that power. That is insane, right? It's nuts. And all this taken on my phone, even the video, even the audio. So let me talk about the video. All the video on this was shot at 4K at 60 frames a second. The challenge is you have to set that before you go into the camera app. So you go to the settings, you go camera, and then you choose what sort of resolution you want there and what frame rate you want. And then you have manual control if you so choose over that when you're actually using it, but you can't change out of that. So you need to think about that. Also, the other video in here was the super slow-mo, and that can only be shot at 1080p, it's the highest resolution, but at 240 frames a second, slows it right down, so it's kind of pretty epic. So what'll happen very shortly, you see, um, you see this little pink dot on the horizon, that's where the sun is gonna start looking really hot and red. And again, the color of the sky will change. If you get down early and you start early, you get to experience a whole bunch of different hues that are in the color of the sky. And like I said, take your phone. Half of these shots have been taken on auto on my phone setting. And the reason I did that is to show you what you can grab. And so the stabilization and the image size on these new phones is just insane. The thing to remember with shooting like this is a lot of it is about composure. And composure is either of two things. It's either creating balance in a shot or ironically, it's about creating unbalance in a shot. So let me show you what I mean. This shot, if I move the camera just to here, is balanced. It's balanced between dark and light. It's balanced in its color. It's balanced in its composition. However, if I do this and I take a shot like that, that's not balanced at all. And it's because it's not balanced, because this massive rock in the foreground is the subject, it actually creates something different. If you look at this shot, I've cut the entire shot in half with the diagonal. So diagonally, the bottom right is dark, the top left is colored, 
and the composition of this shot relies on the big surf and the sunrise to draw your attention from the rocks and from the darkness into the light. The challenge of the phone is that it oversaturates everything. The reason it does that is phone video and phone photography is used in the social platform. That's why it's developed. It's not developed to be cinematic. So if you want to get more cinematic, you have to dial down the contrast a lot and dial down the saturation a little, and that will give you a far more realistic feel. But it comes out of the phone like that, and that's what you will you would have seen in this video. The surf is fast and furious. It's, um, it's pumping, it's eight foot at the moment. Into the black hole. myself right on the rock. I'm actually elevated above, so I don't think I'm going to die this morning. There's some surfers out here. You want to talk about what courage looks like? The surfers out here are like battling these monsters to get out into the ocean, and it's just insane. It's like total respect. It scares the heck out of me. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. But if I tell you now the sun dies out. pop up here because these pandanus that's what these beautiful trees are they can frame a shot beautifully and framing a shot is like a frame in a frame so the basic idea is you use natural elements to create a tunnel that draws the viewers interest into the shot now we have this really interesting um, stump here that I am going to use as a fascinating foreground subject. I thought I'd quickly walk you through how I think about this shot. I'm over here, the sun is not central, but if I move back and I come around here, it doesn't look very good at all. So what I did is I pushed in, so it's about here, and so you have a much more interesting shot where you see the natural framing. And then I thought, we're missing something, because down the bottom, like down here, it's just, it's not, it's not complete. And so what I then did was I flipped it um, like this. Whoop, and all of a sudden, the shot works. Because you have the pandanus on the right, the leaves framing one side, and you have the tree stump on the other framing it. And that looks much better. There's three issues I have with this phone and the images. The first is that it oversaturates everything like wowzers and so you've got to pull it back when you shoot on a normal camera you don't have that problem at all in fact the problem you have is drawing color out of anything uh, so the phone compensates well and truly the other way the other thing it does is in low light this camera struggles now the the sensors behind the three lenses you have three sensors and they're small compared to like a one and a half inch sensor you have on a dslr the sensor means that it will struggle in low light if it's small and it also means it will create noise in your image and so that's what happens in low light or if you um expose incorrectly compensating for that exposure so overexposing or underexposing means things get really grainy and really busy and really messy, kind of mushy really, really quickly. Now, the other challenge with it that you would have seen with a uh, surf photography is you've got a zoom lens. So you've got these three lenses that operate at different focal lengths, which give you an amazing range from super wide to normal range to zoom lens. But if you zoom in all the way, it becomes massively pixelated. You lose all detail. And so you wouldn't use this phone at all for, for zooming in. But what I'm gonna do in a future video, if you're keen for it, is I'm gonna pit this camera against my DSLR in a variety of different photographic settings so you can see how it stacks up against the pro camera. So if you're keen for that, put it in the comments below and we'll get right on it. On the new iPhone 12 Pro, you can shoot in RAW. A RAW setting means when you shoot in RAW, we haven't talked much about RAW in this channel, although I shoot in RAW all the time. RAW enables you to affect the shadows and the highlights much more significantly than if you shoot in JPEG. That's the other option, RAW or JPEG. And most phones shoot in JPEG. RAW means that if we were to take a shot like this, 
we could actually take all this area and bring some of the detail out of it and we could take some of this and calm it down it's very hot so calm it down and you'll see more of the detail and that's why raw is so beautiful whilst at the moment this function is confined to the iPhone 12 Pro and uh, there's a couple of Samsung phones and Google phones um, it won't stay that way the way our cameras are working this now this this phone can shoot a 12 megapixel shot that's the same as my drone folks that's how insane this is and look at the quality and then in post-production you can actually then change what the quality looks like oh it's put it on a show isn't it look at that guy can you see him look how big those waves are Woo! What a glorious day it is. I hope you've had fun coming out. I'm going to show a bunch of images now that I've taken on my phone, uh, other than the ones you've already seen. So you can really enjoy what you can do. Have a great time, everybody. Subscribe below, give us a thumbs up, enjoy the images. I'll see you in the next video. Into the black hole. I also feel like a mountain goat climbing up all those rocks. <laughs> and why not a good selfie image to uh, to finish the day off? <coughs> put it in the mix. So if you're keen for that, put it in the disc. So if you're keen for that, no, I love it when a plan comes together. Glorious skies. No, not.